<laughs> All right. I'm here with Jocelyn. How are you doing, Jocelyn? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. Yeah. Uh, can you tell the listeners just a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you for having me, first of all. Sure. Um, so I'm Jocelyn. I was raised in Wichita. I've been here since I was six months old. Um, I'm 26 right now, and I am an entrepreneur. Um, I started my entrepreneurial journey pretty young at um, age 19, but I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was about 12. Okay. Um, and now I own... Uh, six different businesses um, in the Wichita area. Wow. So Okay. I, there's a lot of those I don't know about that. Yeah. I'm excited to get into it. <laughs> yep. um, it's awesome I can finally get you on. So it is, what, June of 2023. I was going back through. I have like a document. I've reorganized how I structure things, but mm-hmm. of qu- potential questions for like potential podcast guests. And I had a file for you back in like 2019. Oh, and then really? I just never got it done, oh, never reached funny. out or whatever. So it's a long time coming, but I'm glad awesome. we finally got you on. I've always wanted to be on because I see you interviewing a bunch of movers and shakers and cool people in oh, Wichita. Sure. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, you, you've yes. been there for a long time. I yes. just haven't gotten the job done. So, um, so going back from Wichita, um, Went to Wichita East, is mm-hmm. that correct? Mm-hmm. Um, so what was your high school experience like? Were, you mentioned entrepreneurship young. Was that like lemonade stand when you were 12? And then in high school, what were you part of? That kind of stuff. So it was more of an aspiration. When I was um, 12, my bro- brother gave me the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad mm-hmm. uh, for teens. And I read it in one night. And I was like, this is so interesting about like assets and liabilities and becoming an entrepreneur and having businesses. I didn't know this was possible. Mm -hmm. And then um, growing up, my mom had a boss. She worked at a restaurant. She had a boss who was um, a woman. She was the restaurant Mm -hmm. owner. And my mom always mentioned how cool it was that there was a woman that was like the main breadwinner of her family. And so I was like, man, I could be an entrepreneur and I could, you know, like this is like the path I want to go down. So for sure. I knew I wanted to do business, so yeah, uh, I went to East IB, and I um, was pretty involved in the DECA, which was a business club, sure. which is where I learned a lot of business things Very before cool. I got to college. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So the seed was planted pretty early on. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, and then you got a Jabara scholarship. So what was the process of getting that? Congratulations, by the way. That's really cool. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I... It was an application process, and you had to write an essay, and Mm -hmm. um, I wrote an essay. And um, so (laughs) something funny, though, I actually, so the the scholarship uh, application was due at 5 p.m. one evening, Mm -hmm. and it was like 3 p.m., and I was finishing it up, and I'm like, this is not, if I mail this, this isn't going to get there on time. So I literally drove to WSU at like 4.45, and... Um, went into the office of the person where it was supposed to be due and I slid it under her door while she was out of the office. And then I emailed her that I, like a, mm-hmm, like a picture mm-hmm. and I'm like, hey, just so you know, I got it there at 449. It's That's amazing. On time. <laughs> that might have won you the scholarship. Though. Maybe. Yeah. She's like, this girl wants it. Yeah. She's determined. <laughs> yeah, somebody else said it got there on Monday. They didn't get it. They were already out. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so was Wichita State always kind of your number one choice, like staying home in town? Or was that because you got the scholarship you went to Wichita State? No, I, I, I applied to 10 different colleges, and I wanted to go to um, the uh, University of Virginia because mm. they have a fantastic business program. Sure. And I got accepted there, but I didn't get a ton of scholarships. Yep. But at WSU, I had a full ride. Yeah. So it's hard to give up. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I know how that goes. Yeah, so I went to Wichita State as well, doing mechanical mm-hmm. engineering, and mm-hmm. the big thing was scholarships. So it was like I was looking at like Colorado School of Mines, which they have – big scholarships but it also costs 48 grand a year to go right there. or like case state didn't quite get meet the mm-hmm. requirements for the highest scholarship so it's like okay i'm going with just eight but it worked out I, I wouldn't change it for the world so yeah absolutely i feel like i'm actually so grateful that i stayed here because of the opportunities um that i've had mm-hmm. now in my adult life oh, here for sure. in Wichita. yeah for sure um so was it so? You guess you were nineteen when you started. To you, auto was that first? It was yeah. It was called Mobile Cartoon, mm-hmm. Mobile Oil Changes, and I started it with my two of my cousins while we were in college. Okay, very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have that idea prior to when you? I mean, obviously prior yeah. to when you started it, but like in high school or when did that idea kind of start to form? Yeah. So my um, cousin was a two, two of my cousins. They're brothers. They mm-hmm. have. Um, they were getting their engineering degree at WSU. I was getting my entrepreneurship degree. Sure. So they started doing mobile oil changes to pay mm-hmm. for college. Yeah. Um, and I, we just sat down one day and it's like, this is a fantastic idea. Like, let's try to grow this with my business knowledge, which yeah. was very minimal sure. as a freshman sure. Sure. <laughs> at WSU and um, their mechanical knowledge. 
let's let's try to make this a real thing. Like Uber had become a big thing. Yep. We're so we we're like the world is moving towards tech, convenience, things delivered to you. Sure. Let's deliver auto services. Sure. And um, we got our um, hundredth customer in three months. Like wow, as, that's as incredible. little babies. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one a day. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. Wow. And that was changing oil. Did mm -hmm. you do other detailing or yeah. was that the main service? That was the main service for um, a couple years while we were still students. And then I added detailing in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, graduated also that year. Mm -hmm. And detailing had become 70% of what our sales were. Wow. So I cut the other, the mechanic services out. Because sure. they were giving us most of the issues yeah. in the business were from that. Because mechanic work is very complex. Yeah. Whereas um, detailing... Um, it's easier to train people and um, it's just something I'm more, more, pa I more passionate about. And at that point, um, my cousins, they, they had left to be engineers and they actually just left the business to sure. me. So yeah. I was running it by myself. And so I decided to, to do detailing full time. Nice. And that makes sense. Kind of mm -hmm. the whole 80, 20 rule, right? So it's like 80% yeah. of the business for not 20% of the effort, but maybe, I mean, I don't know if detailing seems way easier than changing an oil kit. <laughs> Very thing, much so. so. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so how has that evolved? Obviously from doing oil changes to detailing, what else has kind of evolved in the business for you? Yeah. Um, so the business now, we do mobile detailing. We have um, concierge plants, like we'll, we'll come to your house once a month and detail your car inside and out and keep it clean for you. Sure. Um, we also now go to like Fidelity Bank and set up and clean their employee vehicles while they work. We That's do that. awesome, yeah. We do that at Cargill as well. And then we service a few fleets around town mm -hmm. um, and set up. Sometimes we have like pop-up car cleaning events mm -hmm. at different um, fun events around town. Sure. So, yeah, it's evolved and it's grown a lot. Yeah. And, and how big is the team now? Yeah. So it's um, myself and then three full-time people and then nice. part-time people as needed. Very cool. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So it's slowly growing, but getting there. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and is that where you spend most of your time? Like, is this your, I don't know. You mentioned six businesses, sure. so obviously yeah. you're spreading yourself a lot, but is that uh -huh. like the main one right so, now? So, um, 2U Auto is, it's, it's uh, so like Cash Cow is like a, a, a business that is pretty profitable sure. that you just like are holding on to. Yeah. Um, that's 2U Auto for me, so I only yeah. spend a f like maybe three, four, or five hours a week nice. on 2U yeah. Auto. Yeah. Um, and then the other businesses are, are ones that I'm focusing on growing right now. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So it's the... Keep uh, throwing out the old classic books, but the four hour work week, that's you kind of yeah. got that down. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. Um, did you take investment to start that or since it was kind of, I don't know, you, did you need to or did you take investment? Yeah, I did take investment when I graduated from college. Um, a small investment just to get started by equipment, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only investment I've taken. Very cool. And then. did you give equity for that or how did, or loan or how does that look? Yeah. Yes. Um, cool. I gave equity. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, how is that process? I've never like, mm -hmm. I'm on the peripheries. I listen to podcasts where they talk about investments, but I've never like actually done any of that type of thing. Yeah. So how was that process? Was it hard to find somebody? So it was, it took a lot of networking yeah. to meet the right people. Um, I eventually, um, my investor, he became more of a mentor to me and I had been talking to him about my business and my plans for like six months. Sure. And um, I brought to him a plan and, I was like, this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. you know, and this is how I want to grow it. This is what I need. Um, just give me your opinion, your feedback, yeah. you know. I wasn't asking him for money directly or anything. Sure. Um, and and he, he I think he really believed in me and the plan, and um, and he offered That's me great. the money. Yeah. So, yeah, but it takes, it, it took a lot of, um, like, this, I think there's a term out there that's like date your investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you want to make sure that you both are a good fit if you're going to go Absolutely. into business together. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's like business partners is like, it's basically a marriage, right? So right. it's probably yeah. similar, yeah, kind of idea. Mm -hmm. um, so looking back, like 2018, are you where you thought you'd be ahead of where you thought you'd be, behind where you thought you'd be? And then kind of five years from now, is that going to keep taking off? Yeah. What does that look like? Man, it is so weird right now. Um I never, th I thought I, maybe I would own one bit, one really big business, mm -hmm. but I own a lot of main street businesses. So it's, it looks different. Um, but I'm really happy with where it's going. Sure. Um, very cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, how big, so to you auto mentioned is kind of the cash cow and you've got all this other stuff you're growing. Mm -hmm. 
do you want to you auto to go way beyond Wichita, Kansas? What 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 scale do you think that'll yeah. get to? Yeah. So at this point right now, I am um, seven months pregnant. So I am congratulations. Putting, thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, so I'm putting. Um, I'm trying to focus on that yeah. for the next several months yep. and then decide what to do. Because sure. TU Auto does have um, a lot of scalability. It's it's a it's a it's a simple and effective business model and it's very profitable. Um, but at the moment with where my other projects are at, yeah. they are currently um, I feel like I I I feel like it's more valuable to spend time mm -hmm. on those sure. in the short term. Yeah, and there's only so many hours in the day. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Sure. Uh, what are some of the biggest like lessons you've learned from when you started as a 19 year old to now, like seven years of running the business? Like, what are the biggest lessons, biggest mistakes? What have mm -hmm. you learned from that? Um, there's so biggest lessons really is to invest a lot in your people. The the getting finding good people around you as a business owner is so difficult. You have to hire a lot of people and to really find the right person for each role. Sure. So I've spent a lot more time on hiring and making sure I'm doing that correctly. Um, also, I when I first started, I feel like I tried to um, fix problems that we didn't have like preemptively mm -hmm. and spend a lot of cash on things that I thought were going to be problems in the future that didn't end up being problems. Mm -hmm. um, like I wanted big fancy vans and I, cause yeah. um, you know, and big fancy equipment and this is specific for this and that. And, and, and it turned out that I was spending a lot of time and energy fixing problems that really didn't sure. affect the business. Sure. So, sure. Yeah, I think I've heard like Tim Ferriss and some people like that talk about like uh, just in time rather than just in case. So it's like learning a skill set or mm -hmm. yeah, kind of mm -hmm. building for problems that may or may not even exist. Yeah. It's like just figure it out right. If it happens, cross that bridge when you come. To Absolutely, it, so. start with your MVP. Yep. Um, like good enough to move on, and then do the next thing. Sure. And then where's your most immediate problem, and then keep building. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. How much uh, or how different? I'm trying to how do we? Like you went to entrepreneurship school, mm -hmm. but running a business is completely different. So like how so much was different. actually <laughs> applicable to, cause like as an engineer, uh, I work at Coke Industries full time. Yeah. I use a very, very small fraction of what I learned in school in my job. So mm -hmm. how, how much of that school education do you use in the yeah. job now? I think I, if we're putting a percentage on it, I think it would be 10, 10 to 20%. Sure. Yeah. And I think it helped me understand concepts like, the overall concept, the big picture, yeah, the big picture, and kind of terms and definitions, mm, definitely. And then <clears throat> actually doing it is so different, oh, you know. For sure. Every yeah. and in in each business that we own has its own business model mm -hmm. and its own needs, and they are just so unique. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so I, I was reading through some old articles of you. So there was you Google Jocelyn, you come up with some about your scholarship, mm -hmm. um, kind of the um, NO or Wichita Business Journal, like mm -hmm. 525, that kind of thing. Um, and one of the quotes was how many cars you've worked on in Wichita. So do you have a rough idea of how many cars you've worked on in How town? many cars? Oh. Ballpark um, or sc scale wise? Probably like 10,000 or so. That's incredible. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Thanks. Um, so I want to get into, I, I have one of your other businesses listed, but what are some of the other businesses? You said yeah. six, so let's get into some of those. Yeah, so um, we have the, the Outpost, which is the convenience store and restaurant, uh, to Uato, and then Allied Health Career Training, which was my hus is my husband's, and that, that's one we work on together now. And then we have a real estate holding company. Mm -hmm. We own some commercial real estate around town. Um, and then there's a new one called Rave Champ, Okay. Um, that's a startup. And then um, I'm also releasing a book in at the end of July. Okay. So. And talk a little about that. What is that? Yeah. So um, it is a collaborative book. There are 13 businesswomen from all around the world. Okay. We got together and we wrote our business stories and like our top advice, mm -hmm. um, put it together. And so that'll be released next month. Okay. We will definitely help share that. Yes. I, I saw something on that. It was like Google Books. There's like a, it's not even a preview. It had your name with some, several other women's names. I was mm -hmm. like, what is, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what this is, but there wasn't anything yeah. to like look at really. Yeah. Yet. Not so, yet. Not yet. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like, still oh, working on I'm it. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up for <laughs> yep. sure. Yep. Be um, releasing soon. So, uh, 
we can talk about the real estate or allied health, um, but RaveChamp, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, RaveChamp, it's a media company. So I got into EDM mm -hmm. and um, music festivals about a year ago, really involved. And I have a friend in town who is a DJ mm -hmm. and he also is loves, loves EDM. So um, he and my husband and I are all, um, we're building a company that's hosting EDM events around town. So cool. the first one was Black Box. Um, we were uh, like a like a sponsor in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we're gonna be interviewing and um, EDM DJs around the country. We cool. have a few yeah. lined up. So that's it's in its infancy. That business. Sure. It's a, a startup media company, and right now we're in like the looking for funding stage. Sure, that's that's super mm -hmm. cool. I have some friends, a uh, couple of them live in Denver, and they are very, very into that scene. And a friend yes. in Kansas City, yeah, they, they'll go all over to Electric Forest and do yes, all that. Yes, that's what yeah. we're doing now. Yep. We love, we love, love, love Oh, yeah, love they festivals. live for it, for sure. That's <laughs> awesome. Are there any venues in town that are, like, really good for that in Wichita? Um, we or is that something we're lacking? I, I have no idea. We uh, we started at Flow Foundry. That's where the mm. first event is. Mm -hmm. um, and we're thinking of maybe doing a park next, a sure. park event. Yeah. Very cool. That sounds really fun. Um, next, I want to talk about the outpost. So yeah. what made you want to get in the restaurant business? Why Chini? Just talk a little bit about that story. Yeah. So um, we really, we were looking for somewhere. Um, we were looking for an investment property to mm -hmm. buy the real estate and then lease it to mm -hmm. someone who would start a business. And um, Connor's mom actually found, which is my husband, mm -hmm. my husband's mom found um, this place that was for sale. It was like a bait shop and it had a, like a small kitchen where they like made mozzarella sticks. And sure. Small like stuff. Simple, yeah. small yeah. stuff. Um, and when we toured it, we're like, oh my gosh, it's at the entrance, west entrance to Cheney Lake. Mm -hmm. The Cheney Lake has like 500,000 visitors every summer. Wow. I didn't know uh, that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a really big lake. It's super popular. And there are no like, like sit down like have cocktails, fun sure. restaurants with beer garden and like, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. a, you know, a party atmosphere. Right. Um, we're like, there's an opportunity here. So we started talking and generating ideas and, and um, I mean, it ended up coming together and being like a passion, a super passion project because um, we, we love the lake out there and mm -hmm. we love nature sure. and to, be able to provide a space where people can come and relax and have fun and like leave Wichita for, for a weekend. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's not far, which is awesome. Yeah. So, 45 yeah. minutes yeah, to 25 minutes from the West side. Not too yeah, bad. Not bad at all. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, so what, what have been the biggest challenges with that? Cause that's a completely different business than either of you really do about right. Restaurants or yeah. like renovating all that stuff. So what, mm -hmm. what was that like? So I say the biggest challenge is running mm -hmm. a, the restaurant part. Um, convenience store, I call it like our big garage. So, <laughs> you know, you buy, you sell stuff, but, um, the restaurant, I've never operated a restaurant before. None of us ever have. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are so many moving parts from getting all the right recipes to all like the right processes to cook everything. And then there are like so many like codes and health yeah. Things and then finding the right people, keeping the people, yeah. um, having the right vibe, atmosphere, making sure that every single time a cheeseburger goes out, it goes out the same way and that it looks good. It's a, it's it's a lot. It's a sure. big beast. Restaurants yeah, yeah. are beasts. Yeah, like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So after going through it once and obviously very proud of it, and it looks awesome. I need to head Thank out there. Thank you. Um, would you do it again? Is there? Would you open another restaurant in the future? That's a good question. Man, I don't know. Yeah. I think it would have to be the right location and sure. it would have to be, um, I would have to be like really passionate about right. where it's located and the vibe of it and what's what's happening with yeah. it. Yeah, because this is kind mm -hmm. of perfect storm, it seems like. Like a good yeah. deal on the building. Yeah. Cheney Lake, great, great location, opportunity. great opportunity. Uh -huh. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing to mention, we yeah. have a fantastic team. So that really helps in like I talked about how important people are mm -hmm. the uh Connor Connor myself and our other two partners mm -hmm. um we all have very different skill sets and we are uh like excel in our own yeah. lanes yeah. and so that helps the business come together and thrive definitely 
do you have like a assistant or something like trying to juggle all these different projects yeah. and stuff? Or are you just really organized or how do you, how do you handle everything? I think I, I'm just, I would love an assistant, but I have, um, I'm just really organized. Yeah. Very I cool. love sticky notes and yeah. lists and My problem is I, I like sticky notes too much. The sticky notes are, are ev- everywhere? everywhere. So are then I everywhere? lose track of where the sticky notes are. I do are that sometimes and... too, but got to wrangle them. Um, so what's your day-to-day look like? What, what are you spending yeah. the most time on out of these? How do you kind of split up your day? What does that look like? Yeah, every single day is different. Um, I actually have like focus days where I focus only on the outpost that day. So like Monday, I usually check in all the businesses, make a plan for the rest of the week. Um, so I work on all of them a little bit and then I do, I call it like Monday me day. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that if I need to like get a massage or go to the chiropractor or any of that, like I take care of that Yeah. because you have to take care of yourself first so you can take care of everything else. Then, um, Tuesdays are more to you auto than Wednesdays are more allied outposts. So it's, it's, every day is a different focus depending on the week. Okay. I like that Mm -hmm. a lot. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, do you have, I mean, the rave business rave champ is pretty new, but like, do you have like a list of these ideas that you want to like get rolling? What's, do you have like a next business you want to start? Or are you just so focused right now? You're also having a baby. So that's right. a, a big the project on the, itself. The <laughs> biggest priority yeah. right now, but I do have a list uh, where I have a little booklet where I've written all ideas as they come to me. Yeah. And then I kind of revisit them if I'm ever looking for new ideas. Sure. Very cool. Um, so growing up in Wichita, like what is it like growing up in Wichita and like being an entrepreneur? Like what is entrepreneur seen like? How have you experienced that? What has that been like for you? Yeah, I uh, got involved in like 2018, 2017 with the entrepreneurial scene. And at first it was just like a few, like 15 to 20 of us that we would show up at events Mm -hmm. every time. And now there are so many new people and mm-hmm. a lot of people from the business community, the investor community, um, Main Street business. I feel like there are it has grown a lot and it has evolved. Um, like now we have a lot more programs that support entrepreneurs and um, investment funds and all that. So it just feels like Wichita is um, like there's a growing, um, there's momentum here and every year it gets better. So. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. been really exciting to watch. Absolutely, yeah. I've been, I mean, I feel like I'm like in it, but kind of on the periphery of it, um, just since I have like my full-time day job and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I haven't been able to like jump in fully, but it's been really cool to see like how it's grown and there's like generations of it almost, it seems like. There's like your class or generation, like that mm-hmm. 2017 to 2020, and I can like think of a few other people that I kind of yeah. group into that. <laughs> yep. But then there's like a group of like, older guys, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. like even, I mean, in their whatever, late thirties, forties or older, it's like, it's so interesting to see the generations, but mm-hmm. it's cool thinking back, like the carnies and like the way back, way back generations of innovation and stuff in Wichita, but it's cool to think like it continues on and there are a ton of new people. Nowadays. Yeah. And it's constantly evolving mm-hmm. too. Like now we're bringing mm-hmm. in, there are some more, more tech companies yeah. starting. Oh, for sure. Which yeah, is so exciting. Very to see. cool to see. I think that's important. I think we've both seen it, but there's all those statistics from like the old Chung Report and stuff about like everybody leaving town or like yeah. people, we mm-hmm. both grew up here. I went to Andover, you're from Wichita. Uh, people leave town or they go to college somewhere else and they just don't come back. And so yes. it's, I don't know, we definitely need more opportunities like that and show mm-hmm. people it can be done here. Absolutely. And we, I think <clears throat> there's also um, this Midwest mentality of be like, stay humble, be, be humble, don't like, like, mm-hmm. Don't brag on yourself. And I think we all need to do a little bit more bragging yeah. to, to talk about the cool things we're all doing in Wichita as individuals. Then collectively, that like that's what makes Wichita cool is each person as an individual. So I I I just think there's a lot of people doing cool stuff that don't come out of the woodworks and, and tell us all about it. Definitely. And that's yeah. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, because yeah, I think a lot of people yes. don't tell their stories. You. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's like people might not know your story. And it's like. You, they need to. You've been a mm-hmm. like an in, uh, instrumental part in the community for a while now, and it's Thank like you. you'll only continue to be more and more part of the community, and people need to hear yeah. that and use that as inspiration for an entrepreneur. But then there's like levels. There's like as a female entrepreneur, as like a Latina entrepreneur, like people can see you and be like, oh wow, I can do this now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important to see. Yeah. Oh yeah. It will inspire the next generation for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, there was something I saw a while back, and I don't have any context for it other than just seeing the couple clips. But the okay. the, the, blocks, the blocks, the no. blocks, <laughs> is that what it was? The blocks. Yeah, yes. can you talk about that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Um, so the blocks is the world's largest live-in 
uh, entrepreneurship competition. Okay. Um, I was on season two and season six, and um, it is hosted in Kansas City. Um, people drive from or fly in, drive from all mm-hmm. across the country. Um, the first time it was twenty entrepreneurs. We all lived in the same house for a week, mm-hmm. and we every single day you wake up. And you compete in like business competitions. Mm. Um, there's an educational piece to it, and then you compete on that topic with your own company. Sure. Um, there are judges there, and mm. the judges all are very impressive. Have massive companies, mm-hmm. um, and and it, it is it is intense, and it was really fun and really educational. Yeah. Um, so. Very. That's so. Mm-hmm. Tr- I'm gonna have to go watch that because that's I. Yes. I saw like the the trailer clip for it, but I didn't. Know any more about it? So that's yes, super interesting. Yes, that's the Blocks app, B L O X. Okay. okay, perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some of those competitions? If you remember, like really details, like what what does a one of the competitions look like? Yeah, so there was one where it was like, um, how do you build, or uh, which customer acquisition um, channel is best for your company? There's like forty or sure, plus. Sure. So we learned about the top, the top twenty yeah. to forty, um, and then. The competition was, we had like five minutes to create a five minute pitch, mm-hmm. um, or it was thirty minutes to create a five minute pitch. I don't remember something like sure, that. But sure. they put you, you know, they give you time. You have to create um, and explain. If you were given X amount of dollars, how would you spend it gotcha. to figure out yeah. which which channel is best for your businesses? So that's cool that you could mm-hmm. apply that to your business then yes. and then compete as that because you probably learned a lot about your business. I did, and yeah. I came back with strategies yeah. that I actually implemented, that's you know, and cool. were successful. So very cool. Yeah, very valuable knowledge. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what advantages or disadvantages do you think Wichita has? Like, I don't know. Again, people leave Wichita. People don't mm-hmm. think you can do stuff here. Do you think it's an advantage to be in Wichita or a disadvantage starting a company? So, I believe there are definitely both. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the advantages of how you can start a company with very little funding. Um, and we also do have a lot of talent and resources around um, physically in Wichita and or we know or people here are also connected in other bigger cities sure. if, if necessary. Mm-hmm. So you can start a company with very little money here. And um, but disadvantage is some of the. I guess big investors and mm-hmm. like big I crazy ideas and um there aren't a lot of um like company headquarters here. Right. Um I yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I think that's uh something I, I haven't looked at the stats in a while, but uh, I think last year or the year before I some mm-hmm. saw, saw some stats about like just investment or angel investment or exits or kind of all the different startup numbers. Um, but Wichita was definitely like falling behind compared mm-hmm. to like, I don't know, Des Moines and Omaha and Tulsa and mm-hmm. similar ish size cities. So yeah, that makes sense. I think it is, it can be harder. It's like you think of funding, you think of investments, you think of like San mm-hmm. Francisco or something. You don't necessarily think Midwest, but yeah. clearly these other cities are figuring it out. So it's like, yeah, Wichita kind of needs to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. But I think it helps with like Nexus and stuff like that. But I always think of, uh, like starting businesses, the way Nexus does their like pilot programs now is super cool. It's like some of it's fintech, some of it's health, but it's like if you can make it work here, yeah, potentially you can make anywhere. it work anywhere. And I think I've heard that too about like we're a good test market, like restaurants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they always use this as a test market, mm-hmm. and if it does or doesn't work here, then they take off somewhere else. But like absolutely, you know, like Torchies even went out of business. But like I'm sure that was kind of part of their strategy was testing out Wichita and going from there. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Um. What advice would you have for young entrepreneurs, whether that's high school, college, out of college? What kind mm-hmm. of basic advice would you have? Basic advice. Find somebody who has been successful at what you're trying to do and become their friend and like have them mentor you. That's just something that you can try to do immediately by going to networking events or just looking for events related to what you're trying to do. Um, talk to people. Oh, my gosh. I got such a head start in, in life, I feel like, mm-hmm. because of of the entrepreneurial community and because i when i was you know a junior in college i was out there like at startup grind and one million cups and all these events trying to meet people and they have been a source of knowledge for me and and they've opened doors for me um there's people like the reasons why i got in contact with my investors because somebody i met at a networking event opened that door for me sure just it's 
it's man, it's all about people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I, I always talk about it as like everyone I've talked to has always been so helpful and always so willing to help. And it's like, you have like a one-on-one lunch or coffee Mm -hmm. or meeting and almost every time it's like, what can I do for you? It's like, how can I help you? Which Mm -hmm. I think is super cool. And it's probably not like, I mean, a lot of other places it might be cutthroat. Like they see this competition or something, but here it's, it's. Yeah. That's another advantage. Add it to the list. The Wichita (laughs) people are very kind and always willing to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would, I would second kind of going to those different events. I, I think I met you, was it, is it Trevor? Did he have the co-working space? Yeah, he did. Okay, so uh-huh, I met you. At, yeah, I met you at an event there at uh-huh. base camp, and were you? I yes. think you were officing there. You were speaking. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't remember. What you it were was. talking yeah. about yeah. Wichita yeah. Life yeah, ICT yeah, exactly. when it was yeah. starting. Yeah, it was like very early on. Yeah. That was cool. I met you, and I think I met Trevor that time, and I think yeah. Stephen was still in there at the time. Yeah, so that I was think Ramsey cool. was in there too. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's super cool. So mm-hmm. yeah, just uh, it's cool to see where that goes because it's like it's not just meeting people to meet people it's like i mean i consider us friends and yeah. it's cool to like yeah, yeah. keep up with each other and like we text and see mm-hmm. how things are going and yeah. i think it's super cool and important yeah. part of the community absolutely and you know you have um fans like yes like rooting for you you for know sure. like i'm always like oh what's he doing next oh awesome for you sure. know yeah it's grown so much well that's exciting yeah for sure you know? and i think that all mm-hmm. feeds into the mission and kind of goal of like startup week now which is yeah. growing each year but it's really cool to see like that I don't know. It's like a accumulation all in a, in a week to kind of celebrate that it and is. grow mm-hmm. and everything. So. Yeah, and even the first Wichita Startup Week was so good. I'm like, wow, we brought there so mm-hmm. many people in and fantastic speakers, and yeah. it was just so exciting to see that momentum and for sure. Yeah, and it's cool to see even like I, I almost know nothing about this, but I think it was like flagship Kansas, mm-hmm. uh, the tech community um like they're bringing the Waz Wozniak into town later this fall Ooh, that's which is awesome. like it's like that's like you don't get bigger than like Apple's co-founder yeah so it's cool oh to see like gosh. we're just continuing to like grow and like, I didn't know that that's awesome yeah it's very cool I think it's like a ad Astra conference or something at okay. Wichita State so wow. yeah that'll be really cool oh my gosh so, I'm definitely yeah, gonna mark, sign up for that I think it's in October so okay okay um before we move on to some kind of questions that I kind of ask everybody mm-hmm. is there anything else that you'd like to touch on with the businesses or anything else um Oh, I, if if anyone's interested in in reading the book, I, which that I, that book has a lot of valuable knowledge um, from different entrepreneurs' perspectives, their stories and what they've learned, um, and some of them are really interesting. I think one of the chapters is called "I'm Too Pretty for Jail," so I'm really Perfect. interested to read her story. <laughs> but um, yes, go to jocelynpowell.com. That's my mm-hmm. that's my first and last name. Mm-hmm. Um, to find more information Perfect. for that book. And I'll be sure to share that when it comes out awesome. as well. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Um, what is something that you often recommend to people? Books, podcasts, anything like that? Yeah. Um, I I would say um, some podcasts that I like are Bigger Pockets for Real Estate because mm-hmm. that's really helped develop my real, like, real estate knowledge and portfolio. Sure. Um Rich Dad, Poor Dad is also another real estate one. Um, then there's like the Lean Startup mm-hmm. and Traction. Yep. Traction's a great book as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be sure to list all those as well. Um, what is a favorite failure of yours in any aspect of your life? My favorite failure. <laughs> um, I think... I think, okay, I think it's, we, I actually, okay, um, my team and I hired the wrong person. She was the wrong culture fit for one of our businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, And it ended up being really unhealthy working with that person. We let her go and um, she proceeded to um, like, bully me online bully us online and mm-hmm. i had to get a restra- an actual oh, restraining wow. order against a like previous employee which was something i had never experienced i had never experienced i Any, never yeah, thought right. i would ever in business experience something like that um i think it's the most like it was the most stressful situation because she was like putting our family sure. in danger sure yeah so um yeah that's that's i don't know if it like i think that's the biggest failure that is the most interesting on my list of failures oh sure <laughs> do, you, do you have notes now of like 
I don't know, stuff in the back of your mind when you're hiring people now that like, were there, are there red flags? Oh, heck back? yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. We learned so much from that one, yeah. actually. Grateful it was early on so that I don't make that mistake in my career ever again. For sure. And how is the firing process? I mean, obviously that one was kind of unique, but like, mm -hmm. have you had to learn how to fire people? Because that seems like, yeah. for me, it'd be super difficult. I, I don't know if you know what Enneagram is, but like I'm an Enneagram nine, so it's like no conflict. So oh, it'd be very oh. difficult to like do that. But. Yes. Um, I don't like conflict either, but thankfully I, I think most people are really, when it gets to that point, they kind of, yeah, okay. it's, it's actually a better option for them to find somewhere where they fit better yeah. too. And, sense. um, most people are so kind and, and understanding about it. Like, Hey, you know, I'm sure you've realized, but it's not a good we both know it's fit. Not looking, yeah. They're like, yeah, you're right. You know? So for sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what is your definition of success? My definition of success really is, I would say being happy and doing what I say I'm going to do for myself, not for others. Like not for, that sounds selfish, but like um, don't do something just because you or don't hold yourself back just because you think someone's going to judge you or, you know, or you're too scared of someone's maybe mocking you or something just live for yourself do good things for yourself for sure you know i love that yeah tell me about a life motto that you live by or kind of what's the best advice that you received um one a life motto i, I really like uh i love appreciating people's differences um and not Um, like not judging people and being super, super understanding always unless someone's um, like as long as someone's not hurting others, mm -hmm. like love each other's differences because mm -hmm. I think that's what makes the world beautiful is how passionate everyone is and how unique they all we all are in our own minds. And so um, watch looking at the world from that perspective and appreciating small things like grass and grasshoppers and just like little things every single day has made me such a happy person. I love that. Yeah. Couldn't have said that any better myself. Uh, what is a habit that you've developed over the past few years that's most improved your life? A habit? I would say uh, working out three times a week. Um, yeah, definitely. Because it's hard. Yeah. It was hard to build that habit. Yeah. Um, but once I did, I felt like my body felt healthier and I was more motivated on a day-to-day -day basis, had more energy. Sure. I just feel so much better. I went eating fruit every day. I try mm. to eat fruit every single day. Mm -hmm. So start with taking care of yourself and then you can kick butt and all the other things. There we go. Yep. Ties <laughs> back into what you said earlier. Yeah. Uh, my last few questions are about Wichita specifically. So what is your favorite part of Wichita or what's a hidden gem in Wichita? My favorite part of Wichita. I love the river. Um, bodies of water are just awesome mm -hmm. so oh there there's like a little hidden lake too that i recently went to for the first time and it's like near the highway um near nature the nature center oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think that's such a beautiful little hidden gem yeah. and there's never anyone there it's just like a tiny lake and nature all around and trees and yeah, it's just it's like beautiful. by a highway yeah exactly <laughs> it's, like, it's beautiful though uh -huh. yeah for sure um, is there anything you wish Wichita had that it doesn't? Or what would you change or improve about Wichita? Yeah. I I would like to see more people going out there and bragging about what they're doing and um and being really proud to be from Wichita. Um I I uh, too often hear I too often hear um us like dissing on our own city when we really shouldn't be we should be proud to be here this is a fantastic city we have great prices for real estate we have like amazing restaurants and a, a lot of events every weekend there are so many events and then um so i want us to really be proud of our city and be proud of ourselves and on what we're doing as individuals to make the city cool I agree, hundred percent. And if you're if you're not going to uh, listen to that advice, you can just go ahead and get out of town because we, we don't need the negativity. <laughs> you need to go to Texas or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, last question: What does Wichita mean to you? Wichita, 
Um, when I think of Wichita, I think of all the fantastic people I've met here that are so kind and willing to help each other out and loyal to Wichita, like um, trying to make this city better, actively putting like resources and time into it. And Wichita is full of opportunity. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. Jocelyn, where can people find you or your pl plethora of businesses and yeah. everything you're doing? Sure, yeah. JocelynPowell.com. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll point you there. We'll link that up. But thank you so much for coming on. And I'm excited to do an update in a couple of years, kind of where everything's at and yes. what other new businesses you've started. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much.